Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial on Andrew's RotoCheck, a gizmo that I designed. I'm here to kind of explain some of its features and how best to use it and get the most out of it. So this particular gizmo was designed to help people, as you can see, to check their roto and also to help their uh, keying options with green screen, blue screen, uh, what have you. And essentially this is not only for the artist but also for the supervisor to be able to check the quality of their work because I found it a little bit frustrating that inside Nuke I could press M and see the red overlay but uh, I wanted to be able to change this color and have more options and if I press A and see the alpha again I, I have this option here but I can't really see the background and in, I normally was kind of doing the same things over and over again and I decided why not put that into a gizmo that is available for everyone. So. Let's take a look at what we need to do here. We've got three inputs, the alpha, the plate, and the custom background. If you don't have the custom background, that might mean you have an older version of the gizmo. Um, it's currently at 1.3, uh, so I recommend download version 1.3, which is available on Wikipedia. So if I plug this in here, uh, let's say I go in and say, let's look at this plate. I will plug the plate into my plate and the alpha into my rendered out alpha. This might actually be your key or a particular roto shape uh, whatever it is that needs to go into there. So I plug that in like that and I view from here. And it's looking pretty cool. I can see it's multiplied over the background. Um, you may actually have to change this right inside here, the plate size, if you're not using an HD plate. So as an example, I have one over here. This one is actually 4K and you can see we don't really see the entire plate. So right away I need to adjust this and say, hey, you're actually 4K and now everything is set in the right spot. If the alpha is not something that you have separate as a, uh, an alpha, it's actually inside this particular node, you can see here, then we just need to plug the alpha into the same plate. And now it will be working just the way we want. So now that that's working, um, we have everything available to us. And this will also help with checkerboards and constants to ensure that they are the proper size. If I go to the checkerboard, I can see it over here now. Um, so you've got an option right at the top, which is invert, and this is very useful to be able to isolate either the background or the character or thing that you're rotoing. Um, and you've also got an overall mix down here. If you drag this uh, the opposite way to one, it will basically start to mix it down and we can see the background. And this is available for every single view. So if we go to the black constant, you can see we can start to mix that back and forward. Um, and we can do the same thing with the white constant. And if we just made the character solid white like that, we can also mix that down as well. The other views that we have include brighter, which can be for the background or the character, darker, same thing for the background of the character. And this is two f-stops brighter or two f-stops darker. Uh, we also have checkerboard, which we've seen, solid gray, color constant, which can be any color that you want inside here. Um, you also have the color multiply, which usually looks better on the character, and the color plus, which helps to brighten it and works better on uh, darker shots such as this one. Finally, we've got the custom background input, which is a recent addition that I'm proud of. And I wanted to show you how we can use that now. So sometimes you might be doing something like using, in this case, color bars or some sort of random image that you want to kind of comp it over. That can be quite useful. I find it particularly useful um, if we're working with uh, something that we're going to comp on top of. So if you actually know this character is going to be comped into, say, an uh, indoor environment, and you have the actual plate, plug that in here, and then you can see what it actually looks like in that particular um, layout. So if we go here, invert the alpha, now we can see what it looks like with her in front of the color bars. Another great way to use this is to actually plug this back into the original plate. And now I can use things like a grade node and say, hey, I would like to darken this or brighten this. And now instead of having those two f-stops uh, as a limitation, you can basically do any sort of color correction that you want uh, over just that isolated background or just over the character. Um, technically, I could have put those controls inside here, but I thought the node was going to get too crowded and I wanted to give people the uh, flexibility to put whatever they want inside here. Um, including things like uh, saturation. And maybe they decide to desaturate the background or uh, the character in this case. Something like that. So a lot of cool things you can do with this. Um, curious to hear your thoughts and maybe if there's something you do a lot we could incorporate that into the gizmo itself. Uh, if you do have suggestions feel free to email me 
This is my email, admin at andrewzeller.com. You can also comment in Wikipedia on Gizmo. It always helps. Um, so let's take a look at some of the last few options that we have here. So instead of using custom background, if I go back to, let's say, over at black constant, we have our character. You do have this option here of hiding rough splines. So if I uncheck that, it will show the, the rough splines. So this is not the actual roto shapes. This is uh, a simple edge detect with a, a bit of a filter on top of it to try to detect the edges of the image. And I found this was helpful for isolating regions where we have little gaps that could potentially be a hole. Um, so let's take a look over here at this roto, which is well done. But hopefully we can try to spot an error or something that might look like an error. So little things like that. I find it's quite helpful when I'm keying a character. It might reveal, oh, this could be something that I need to actually fill in uh, or something sort of like that. It tends to magnify potential problems. Um, and this one is also an HD plate, so we'll switch that back. And with these, you can also change the color as well. So whatever color you want to be the splines. Um, just another tool at your disposal for being able to check for possible errors. Finally, we've got down here the emergency options. These are simply a joke. Don't worry too much about them. They won't actually change anything in the comp. It's just a little model that you can use for yourself um, to uh, essentially keep yourself going. If you want to blame the world, blame Nuke, or just do it. Uh, whatever setting you choose, that can be your motto as you are working. I hope that was helpful. We've covered essentially how to connect these inputs, uh, the plate size options, which are essentially just everything that we would find normally inside a reformat. Um, we can choose any format that we want, and we can choose any different type of resize method, it's center or not. Um, you've also got the views and controls, so we've gone over all of the 10 options in here uh, that can be inverted as well. Um, we've got the overall mix as well, and the custom colors that we can choose for all of the things that we're using, such as this. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, feel free again to comment, and I hope you enjoy using this. It's been very useful to me. Thank you for listening.